So I've tried at least a dozen different email apps. I don't know why I can't be happy with a basic Apple Mail app. I mean, it works just fine, but I never really like the looks of it, and there just sometimes seems like there's just too many options. Then a couple of years ago, I came across Spark Mail, a free app on the App Store, and I've never looked back. If you'd like to learn how the Spark Mail app works, then stick around. This video is for you. Hi, my name is Rich, and each Friday I release an easy to follow video for seniors and beginners on how to use their iPhone and iPad. I design these videos to ease you into using your favorite device, and I do my best to keep things simple yet informative. If that sounds like something you'd like, please consider subscribing. We've got a great community of seniors and beginners across the globe. It's just amazing. Today, I'm gonna to show you why you might wanna consider using Spark Mail as your default email app on your iPad. Spark is also available for your iPhone. So if you have both devices, you won't have to switch between programs when you switch between devices. Spark hits the mark for me from ease of use to useful features that just make sense. So today, I'm going to show you how to download and install Spark Mail on your iPad, how to set up your email account. You need to have an existing email account. Spark doesn't create an email account for you. So you need your iCloud account or your Gmail account or something like that. But I'll show you how to set that up in Spark, how to set up Spark's appearance, how to use Spark's swipe gestures, including pinning an email and how effective that is, and then how to search for an email. All simple, easy stuff. All right, let's get started. Okay, the first thing I wanna show you how to do is how to download and install Spark from the App Store. Um, and if you don't know how to use the App Store, I've got a video on how to do that. Um, I'll put a link in the description below. Okay, the first thing you do is tap on the App Store icon, tap on search, go up to the search bar, and type in Spark, hit search, and here you see it, it's popped up here. Tap on the little cloud if you've used it before like I have, you'll have a little cloud. If you've never downloaded it before, you'll see it'll say the word get. So just tap on that and let it download. It takes just a second for that to happen. Then click open and that's all there is to it. That's how you download and install Spark. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is how to set up your email account in this. And as I mentioned at the beginning of the video, you need to have your own uh, email uh, address already. So if you've got a Gmail address or you've got a, an Apple iCloud address, just make sure you have that information handy as you go to set up uh, your Spark email. So what you do is you find your Spark app, which is right here for me, tap on it, little welcoming screen will pop up, click next. Next, 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 and then you'll get on Let's Start. So here you're gonna type in your email address. I'm gonna use my rich at begintogether.com. I'll type that in. You tap on I agree to spark terms of use and click Next. Spark would like to send you notifications. You can allow that or you can turn that off. I don't particularly like to have notifications. I check my phone from time to time or my iPad, and I don't want it always bugging me. So in this case, I'm going to turn on Don't Allow. And then it says Spark wants to use MicrosoftOnline.com to sign in. That's because the account I'm using is a Microsoft email account, but yours may say Gmail or iCloud. So you just hit Continue. And here I'll have to log in and I'll use my password that I've already entered and I'll sign in. It says, are you trying to sign into Spark? I am, so I'll hit continue. And now I just click on start using Spark. And there you go. And Spark would like access to your contacts. I'm gonna click OK. And that's all there is to it. Now I've connected my email address with the new Spark app, and that's how you set that up. All right, the next thing I wanna show you is how you can alter the appearance of Spark to make it look the way you want it to look. Right now I have it on dark mode, but to get into the settings and to set up the appearance the way you wanna set it up, you'll just tap on these little three lines in the top left corner and go down to settings at the bottom. 
and then you can click on appearance and you can click on light mode if you want it light which I don't dark mode which I do like because I don't like looking at a flashlight but I think I'll put it on system and that way when I switch between dark and light mode on my iPad it'll change the look of spark you can also set it up to use true black so dark mode is not really perfectly black and some people like a darker look so if you want that you can turn that on number of lines of preview it says one line show avatars is turned off so let me show you what that means so if we go back if we leave it like this and we go back you'll see in my email here that you can see new email account login spark and then underneath it you just see one line of information about the email maybe you want more than that so if you go back to settings go to appearance and go to number of lines of preview I'll now tap on three and I'll go back and now you can see there's more information underneath the header of the email and maybe you like it that way just because you can quickly take a glance at the sidebar here and see what the content of the email is but that's up to you but that's one of the settings that you can set for the way the appearance is and the way spark will look so going back to settings and to appearance you can also click on show avatars avatars are like little images beside the email so again if we go back over here and look you'll see we have sort of a, an emoji here but there's no avatars over here on the side if we go back in to settings and appearance and we click on show avatars and we close out the settings again now you'll see the icons or the avatars that go along with it on the side and some people like that look I like to keep things sort of clean so for me I turn avatars off and that's just a little bit cleaner look but that's up to you but those are just some of the ways you can change the appearance of spark there's a few more things in there but I don't want to get this video so detailed that it doesn't make sense to you so um, just take a look at it and set it up the way you'd like it to be set up okay the next thing I want to talk to you about is swipe gestures so you know the iPad, you're swiping left and swiping right and swiping up and down. Well, it's the same thing in Spark. Over here are your emails, and if you tap on it, the email will open up over here and you can read what the email says. So it's over on the right side like this, very easy. And if you wanna get rid of this email, you can just take it and swipe, and you can delete it, or you can pin it, or if you go the other direction, you can mark it as unread or you can archive it. Just whatever you want to do. So you have four choices there. You can archive, delete, pen, or mark it as unread. And that's typically what I leave this set as, those four choices. So if you want to um, pen this, you just go about halfway and then let up. And if you'll notice, a little orange pen shows there. Now if you go back in here and you click on pens, that one email shows up. So sometimes I get a lot of email and I don't wanna act on them right away, so I just pen those emails and then I archive it from the inbox. I don't have to look at it anymore and then I just go to my pinned emails and take care of whatever I need to take care of. So if you'll notice, Apple News is there in the pins, but if I go back to the um, inbox, it's still here too. So I can do this and I can just archive it and now it's gone. However, it's still showing up in pins, so I can still get to it. And that's how I handle important emails that typically have some task related to them or something that I need to do or I need to respond to and I pin those emails if I can't get to them right away. And that way I keep my inbox looking clean. Now, before I jump away, there's some really sophisticated uh, swipes that you can set up. If you go into settings again and you go to swipes, you have a left short, left long, a right short, and a right long. But look at this. If you notice, 
we have pen right here for the right short. That's just swiping right a little bit. If you tap on that, you can change it. You can change it to snooze or move to spam, or you have all these other options, save to files or Evernote or Google Drive or things or Todoist. There's just a lot of ways that you can change that swipe to be more functional for what you want it to do. I keep it simple for me because I don't want to have to keep thinking about complicated stuff in my email, but there are some of you who might find changing what the swipe does uh, to be very helpful. So just something to keep in mind. Okay, the last thing I want to talk to you about is a very simple thing, and that's just searching for email. So if you're up here and you want to try to find an email, you can just tap on the spyglass, type in what you're looking for. We'll type my name and just hit search. And now emails that involve my name come up. So here we've got Rich at Begin Together there. This is to me, so it's showing up there. You know, if you wanted to just type Maybe app and hit search. You get Apple News, Apple Books, App Store, Apple TV, and so forth. And so you just um, go up again, tap on the spyglass, enter your search term, and hit search. And that's all there is to it. And you can find emails very, very easily and very quickly that way. For me, Spark just hits the sweet spot when it comes to ease of use. I've been through so many email programs that just don't hit the groove for me, but Spark hits it just right. I've been around tech long enough to know that email programs are really quite personal and what works for one person may not work for another. So be sure to just use whatever works best for you. But if you are looking for an easy to use email app, then be sure to give Spark a try. It's free after all, and you know, you can't beat free. Well, that wraps up this short tutorial. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.